there, welcome to Illuminate at Home. My name's Tracy, I'm a visual artist. I generally work in and around Glasgow, but of course, currently I'm unable to do that. So I am absolutely delighted to be able to talk to you all today via the fantastic medium that is film. Um, usually when I'm out and about delivering workshops, I may work with people who are not terribly confident in visual art making. Um, often people have a very fixed idea that to be good at art means that you have to be very good at drawing and painting the sort of more sort of traditional fine arts if you like. Um, but today I'm hoping to show you some methods that are very simple and effective that really anyone can give a go at home. I've tried really hard as well to limit the materials to things that you may have in your cupboards because I know that most of you can't get out and about to get materials at this time. So there's three different methods I'm going to show you that all require three different sets of materials. So if you don't have the items for one of the methods, don't worry and stay tuned because you may find that you have got the items to try out some of the others that I'm demonstrating today. So today I'm hoping to show you how to marble paper. Um, and like I said, I'm going to be using three different methods. The first method, method I'm going to use is using shaving foam. And this is a really fun um, way to marble. It's quite a sensory way. Um, there's lots of lovely smells from the shaving foam. It's very tactile to work with. And it's really lovely to be playful and stir and, and watch all the colours blend, as you will see in the film that I'm about to, to do for you. So that's one method. The second technique I'm going to show you is using things from your kitchen cupboard. Um, so this one has been created using vegetable oil and food colouring. So quite a different look to this one. Um, the great thing with marbling is that it's a very unpredictable way to work. So you never quite know what you're going to get. You don't have control over the materials when they start to blend and move around. Um, but it's quite exciting to see what results that you can get from it. So this is a really effective one. And again, you can create some beautiful pieces of craft paper that you can use for future projects. And the third and final technique I'm going to demonstrate is one using nail polish. Now, I will say that this one is a little bit fast moving. Um, the nail polish tends to set very quickly. We will be using warm water. Um, all of the techniques and methods will be um, described in the videos as, as they go on. Um, but yes, this one can get a bit messy. Um, but you do get some lovely shiny results from using the nail polish should you have any of that lying around uh, at home. So I am going to film um, me doing the activities using an overhead camera because that gives you a very good view of my hands and what I'm doing and also a side camera so you won't see much of this in the film going forward but that's no bad thing. Um, what I would say is please do take care and take time to listen to all the instructions. Remember, as this is a video, you can pause this at any time um, just to digest what I've asked you to do. Um, and as soon as you hit play, I'll be right back here with you again. So please do use that as an option if you need it. Also, take care with the materials, protect yourself and protect any surface that you're going to work on. So. I will be putting down a protective cover on my kitchen table that I'm working at at the moment and I will be putting an apron on too. So I'll go off and do that and I'll join you right back here. Marbling with shaving foam. You will need a tray. Baking trays work well. Some thick paper that fits your tray. Some shaving foam. Foam is better than gel. A mixture of water-based paints, colours of your choice or whatever you have. A stirring implement, in my case a straw. Some kitchen towel. And a ruler. Using your shaving foam, 
Dispense as much as you can out into the base of your tree. This can take a little bit of time. Ideally, you want to cover the entire base of your tree. Now using your hand, you can gently push the foam around the tree just to make sure that the entire inside base has been covered. This is quite a nice thing to do. The sensation of the foam can be quite therapeutic. Make sure you push the foam into all the corners and edges and try and create a flat surface to work on. Now choosing your colours, drizzle some of the paint onto the surface of the foam. You don't have to be too careful with this. I generally work with two to three colours. Any more than this can cause sort of muddy results. So limit your yourself to around two to three colours. So I'm just dispensing my third and final colour. And again, not too concerned about where the paint lands as this will be getting moved around in a second. So taking your straw or whatever stirring implement that you have, gently agitate the paint and swirl it around the foam. This is really pleasing to do too. So just take your time and enjoy this. Enjoy how the colours blend and move and sit on the surface of the foam. Be careful and gentle in this process because you don't want to mix the colours too much. You just want to blend and make some nice pattern. And when you're happy with that, set your stirring tool aside and get your first sheet of paper and very gently and carefully place it on top of your foam. Gently pat the paper just to make sure that it's coming in full contact with the foam underneath. Take your time, work around all the edges. Taking a corner, carefully peel the paper back to reveal your print. There's a lot of excess foam and paint at this stage, but set your piece aside just to allow it to dry. Using your stirring tool, gently move the paint around again. Notice I've not added any further colour. I think I'm just going to work with what's here already because it's looking quite nice. Just enjoying the playful way that the paint and the foam is mixing together. So taking the second piece of paper, I'm gently going to cover the surface of the foam. Again, carefully patting the back of the paper, just making sure it's pushing against the foam underneath. And when I'm happy that the paper has been in full contact with the foam, just gently peeling away from the corner to reveal the print underneath. So again, lots of excess foam and paint, but just setting that piece aside to dry. And I'll do one final demonstration of this technique. And at this stage, I feel like I should add a little bit more colour. So feel free for you to do that. Just have fun with it. Don't be too precious. Add in a touch more of the red. And again, using my straw, just gently moving the paint around the foam. And when you're happy with what you've done with that, set your stirring tool aside. 
get your next piece of paper and repeat the process of gently pushing the paper against the foam. Now peeling back to reveal my third and final print for you. Looks a bit of a foamy mess at this stage, but don't worry. Just set the piece aside and let it dry. So this is an ideal time for a short break because you want to give your paper around 10 to 15 minutes just to fully absorb the paint and the foam for the best results. So it's an ideal amount of time just to enjoy a cup of tea. After giving it the time, um, around 10 to 15 minutes, gently scrape your ruler across the surface of your page. I've cleaned my tray now and so just using it as a place to wipe off the excess foam and paint. Having scraped that off, it has revealed my final marbled piece of paper. And now repeat that process for all of the pages that you've worked on today. So again, carefully starting at the top, pushing away works quite well. Just drag the ruler across the surface of the paper, scraping away the excess paint and foam. You can use your paper towel just to clean that off. And it's at this stage that you can see the marbled piece of paper that has been revealed. And one more time for my final print. Carefully moving the ruler across the surface of the page just to reveal the print underneath and get rid of all that excess foam and paint. Just allow those to dry. And there you have it. Some beautiful crafting paper. Vegetable oil and food colouring marbling. You will need for this a tray. Oven trays work well. Some sheets of paper that fit your tray. Heavy paper works best. A jug of tap water. Some different colours of food colouring. Two to three is enough. Two to three mixing bowls, some vegetable oil, some paper towel and a straw or stirring implement. Carefully pour your tap water into your tray. Just cold tap water is fine. Using your mixing bowls, Pour out a little oil, a little goes a long way, so just a little touch at the bottom of each bowl. Just pour out as many colours as you need. Add a small amount of the food colouring to each of your bowls of oil. Just carefully and gently pour that into the surface of the oil. Today I am going to work with three colours. Now using your straw, gently mix in the colour into the oil so that you have a coloured oil. So here we have a lovely red coloured oil. Just mixing this green food colourant into the oil to create a green oil. And finally mixing in blue food colouring to give a blue oil. The 
this gives you your palettes of oils to work with. So of course oil will float on the surface of the water, so gently pour in your colours that you want to work with. And you can see the oily film on the top of the water there. So that's some red. I'll work with two colours to begin. Now just adding the green. Drizzling that across the top of the water. So gently stir with your stirring tool. And then get your paper and float it on the surface of the water. Now you'll see the oil seeping through the back of the paper and you'll know that the whole of the page has been in contact with the surface. And there you have, it's a very different effect from the shaving foam. Pop that to one side to let it dry. So I'm now going to add some of my blue, just to mix it up a little. Drizzling that across the surface of the water. Adding a touch more green. Again, be playful with this. And getting a sheet of paper, simply floating it on the water and then quickly lifting it off. You have absolutely no control over the results of the marbling, which I think is the exciting part about the process. So again, I'm just adding a touch more colour to the water before I do my third and final demonstration for this technique. A touch more green and a touch more blue. Gently mixing the surface of the water and applying my third and final sheet of paper for this technique. Again, watching the oil seep through the back of the page and gently lifting. So you can enjoy this process for as long as you like. Marbling with nail varnish. This one is messy. You will need a bowl that's not precious, one that's good for crafting. Some paper that fits the bowl. A selection of different nail varnishes that you may have. Some nail polish remover just in case. Some kitchen towel. A stirring implement, in this case a cocktail stick. A jug of warm tap water. And some protective gloves if you have them. So now I've got my gloves on just to protect myself from the nail polish and I'm using quite hot water just from your tap into the bowl that I only use for crafting. So you have to work quite quickly here because the varnish can set quite fast. So just drizzling some colour on top of the water. Again, it doesn't really mix with the water. It sits on the surface, as you'll see. Again, only working with a palette of two to three colours. And very quickly, just drizzling on my third and final colour. Now, you can stir it if it's not already set. You will see um, if it has set when you touch it with your stirring implement. In this case, it has already started to set, so there's no need for me to stir it. So gently just putting the page onto the water and the page lifts all of the varnish off of the water and the water becomes clear again. So again, working with just two colours this time, I think. Some of the green and then gently adding some purple on top. So as it's setting really fast, I won't attempt to stir it this time. Just go straight to the paper, sit it on the surface of the water and almost immediately lift it off. Fantastic. So you can see it's a very fast moving method. So again, for the third and final time, I'll demonstrate just adding the colour to the surface of your water, swirling it around as you pour it, drizzling on a second colour, and if you choose a third, 
Now already the varnish is already starting to set on the surface of the water. So quickly get my third and final paper, just sitting it on top of the water to lift all of the varnish off. Fantastic. If you have a spare item of ceramic, in this case, a white ceramic works best because the colors show up. Something that's not precious, feel free to give this a go too. So this plant pot is going to be dipped into the varnish. So just repeating the same process as before, gently drizzling the color on top of the water. Just placing my third and final color on. before just immersing my pot into the water. And there you have a decorated plant pot. Hi again, I hope you had a little bit of fun with that and got some good results. Um, I really did enjoy demonstrating that for you today and I was particularly pleased with my shaving foam results today. I think they turned out really well. Also the plant pot as well. So if you did manage to have a go on some piece of white um, tableware or plant pot that you have, I hope you've managed to have some good results with that as well. Um, remember to keep a hold of all your lovely marbled paper. Uh, if you let it all dry flat, it makes a fantastic crafting paper. And if you stay tuned over the next uh, few weeks, I will be back here to show you some ideas of what you can do with your paper that you've produced today. So thanks again for watching. It's been a pleasure to demonstrate um, these techniques to you today. And please do stay safe. Thank you.